What we're going to be going over here are stock warrants issued with bonds and we're going to be using the proportional method here to allocate these bonds and these warrants. And what we're going to be also looking at is exercising the stock warrants here that are issued with these bonds. And for example here, Corporation A issued 4,000 bonds here at a thousand dollar par value at a 101 or 101 percent of par and each bond has was issued here with one detachable stock warrant. And we're going to be looking at these different cases here. So after issuing the bonds here, we're going to be selling, they're going to be selling at 98% a par without the warrant here. So they're going to sell uh, separately here without the warrant at 98 or 98% a par. And the warrants had a market value here of $40 each. And there's one warrant attached to each of these bonds here. And we're going to be looking at uh, two cases here where after we calculate the issuance of these bonds and these warrants, we're going to be looking at a case here where the investors exercise 50% of the stock warrant and we're going to also be looking at the case here where the investors fail to exercise any of the warrants here. So first let's just go through this proportional method quickly here to determine um, how we'd handle this our paid in capital here on these stock warrants when we come to exercising these warrants. So first for a proportional method we use that when we ha know the fair value of all our securities are known. In this case we know the uh, separate value here for the bond and also the separate market value here for the warrant. So we're going to allocate the proceeds received proportionally between these securities. So let's just look at allocating one unit here. That would be one bond with that one attached stock warrant. So the bond and the warrant here would be sold separately. So based on that separate selling price, our bond here, we'd allocate that 98% here. Bond sells at 98% or 98 times a thousand dollar par value. So the bond here would be worth $980. And the warrant, we're given that here. It's selling at $40 on the market here $40 per warrant. So the total uh, market value here, fair market value of the bond and the warrant is $1,020, simply the sum here. So the allocation here would be based on the, uh, well in this case for the bond it would be 980 uh, divided by 1,020. That fractional amount here would equal 96.1 percent is allocated to the bond and the warrant gets uh, 40 here of the 1,020. That fractional amount equals 3.9 percent. Yeah, uh, assigned here to the warrant or allocated to the warrant. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to allocate the receipts or the cash we received here between the bond and the warrant. So our total sales receipt here will we sold 4,000 units here at a thousand dollar par value for the bond at 101 or 101 percent here. That equates to four million forty thousand dollars. So we allocate to the bond here. Well, we use that fractional amount here that we uh, had allocated here per one unit here times that total sales receipt here four million forty thousand dollars and that would be uh, three million eight hundred eighty two thousand dollars allocated to the bond based on that percentage allocation up here uh, that we determined here on an individual or per unit basis and then allocation to the warrant simply the same fractional amount that we allocated to the warrant on a per unit basis times the total cash receipts here of four million forty thousand dollars so 158,000 would be allocated to the warrant the other thing is we have to determine uh, when we have any bond premium or discount that also has to be uh, allocated here so in this case we're going to have a discount so uh, the bond the allocated bond here was three million eight hundred eighty two thousand it's less than the bonds uh, total bond par value here of four million dollars that was that four thousand units times a thousand dollar par amount so the difference here gives us a bond discount of a hundred eighteen thousand dollars Okay, next to record this here, so we'll go through that quickly. So the cash we receive, and okay, first off we had those 4,000 bonds issued at 101% with one deep attachable warrant per bond here. So uh, for the cash we received here for the bond plus the warrant, those were 4,000 uh, bonds here sold at 101 or 101% here. And that equals, uh, well, $1,010 times 4,000 uh, units here or bonds sold. That equals $4,040,000 here. So that's the cash we received on the sale. Now we have our bond liability here that we have to set up. So our bond par amount here was 4,000 times the $1,000 par per bond. That equals uh, credit that here for $4 million. And then we also have this bond discount. 
that we have to account for. So that's a contra liability account or reduces our bonds payable and that we debited for $118,000. That was what we allocated and calculated above here. Okay, so the other thing we have to deal with is this warrant value, and that's what we want to concentr uh, concentrate on. So we put that into a paid-in capital for stock warrants, and that was the amount that we allocated here for those warrants, $158,000. So we credit that here, paid-in capital stock warrants, credit that for $158,000. So that's a warrant that's um, part of shareholders' equity here, whereas the bonds are a liability account here. So um, Okay, just to go over it one more time here, just so we understand this bond discount, we had the bond par value here of $4 million. What we allocated was 3882000 So this is what the difference here gave us that discount of $118,000. So this is what we want to be concentrating on, this paid-in capital here to the uh, stock warrants. And this is where it's going to come, we're going to come into play here when we execute some of these warrants. Okay, so let's go over here and look at the first case here where we're going to, where we assume that the uh, investors exercise 2,000 of these warrants here, 50% of the warrants that were outstanding with those bonds, and there's one warrant per share of common stock. So one warrant buys one share of common stock, and the common stock uh, we're going to receive $25 here per share. That's what the stockholders are going to pay back to the company here for this common stock. And they're going to do that with this one warrant per share here. And uh, the other thing is for a common stock, it's going to have a $5 per share par value. Okay, so how would we record this here? So we take our cash account here. Well, that we have, in this case, 2,000 shares are going to be exercised. And there's $25 per share of the market value, so we would debit or increase our cash account here for $50,000. Now, the other thing is we're issuing this common stock here, so we have our par account here for common stock. Again, 2,000 shares at $5 par per share. That equates or credit that here for $10,000. And then the other thing we have is... Um, well, let's look at this paid-in capital here for our stock warrants. So uh, this is the case where 50% of the warrants are going to be exercised. So we had a credit amount here where we allocated that total 158000 here, credit to our paid-in capital for our stock warrants. Now upon the exercise of 50% of the warrants here, we're going to reduce that or credit debit that here by $79,000, simply half of the paid-in capital we had for the stock warrants upon the exercising. Now, now now, this is where we come in with a balancing account. This is for the additional paid in capital here for our common stock. And this becomes a balancing account. This is where the excess is going to come in to play here between our credits here to our common stock par amount here and our debits for the cash we received here and also our debit or reduction to paid in capital for our stock, uh, for our stock warrants here. So this is simply... Uh, the additional paid-in capital comes, uh, common stock becomes a balancing entry between those accounts. So that's simply here our $50,000 debit here to cash plus, uh, minus our, our plus our $50,000 debit or reduction here to paid-in capital for our stock warrants that of $79,000. And then we would subtract out our credit amount here for our common stock par amount here of $10,000. That gives us that balancing amount here of $119,000. So additional paid in capital here, credit that for $119,000. Simply a balancing entry here between the cash account, our paid in capital reduction here, and also the common stock par value here. So you can see this is how we take care of the um, when we exercise these warrants, we reduce our paid in capital for those warrants here based on the percentage that we're exercising. And then the and then when they're exercised, the common stock is going to be issued here. And then we receive the cash here and whatever the market price is or whatever the stockholders are uh, shareholder or purchasers of the stock are paying for it. Then the difference between that, the paid in capital here, and the common, and then we look at our common stock par amount here that we increase that by. Then any excess goes into additional paid in capital common stock credited in this case for one hundred nineteen thousand dollars. 
Okay, so we've taken the case, um, taken care of the case here where we've exercised 50% of the stock warrants and how we made our reduction here to paid-in capital for our stock warrants. Now let's look at the next case here. Let's assume that the investors fail to exercise any of the warrants here. So really this is just moving our accounts around here. So we had our paid-in capital to our stock warrants here and we had that credited here for the allocated amount here of $158,000. Now let's assume that uh, again these investors and fail to exercise any of the warrants. They didn't use any of the warrants. So all we have to do is we debit our paid-in capital to our stock uh, warrants here uh, by $158,000. That was the amount that we originally allocated here. That's based on the failure of not exercising any of these warrants and we just transfer it into another paid in capital account here for the expired uh, warrant, uh, uh, warrants here, these stock warrants. So we credit that here for $158,000. So that's just a book uh, uh, entry here. So we debit or reduce our paid in capital here to our stock warrants by 158000 and then we'd credit a paid in capital for the expired warrants here by 158000 So what's really happening here, the additional paid in capital here reverts from the former stock, uh, reverts to the former stockholders or shareholders of this stock. Uh, so the additional paid in capital here is for, the, uh, for these warrants here is not reduced, it's just transferred. Even though we've reduced it here, we debited or reduced it here as paid in capital for our warrants, we actually credited or increased it here for a paid in capital for our expired warrants. Just an, rather a transfer and, and just to note it here in the uh, in the equity accounts here, the difference between uh, the original stock warrants here versus the expired warrants. That's all we're doing here. So we've taken care and we've looked at now the case here where we issued these warrants here and we had to use the proportional method here because we knew the price of both the common stock and the warrant in that case. So in that in that instance we use the proportional method. After using the proportional method we can go back here and we we allocated a certain amount here based for those stock warrants that was paid in capital for the stock warrants and then when these warrants were exercised then we re reduced our paid in capital here for the stock warrants and then we transferred that over into whatever the difference was into additional paid in capital for a common stock based on whatever the par value was here versus the cash that we received here for the common stock that was sold uh, or exchanged or sold here for those warrants. The warrants were uh, exchanged here uh, for or used to buy common stock. And then we also looked at the case here and uh, we can go back down here where the investors failed to exercise any of the warrants and that was really a transfer of our dollars here. We transferred it out of the paid in capital the stock warrants here to the paid in capital for expired warrants here and that's only a bookkeeping entry here. So the additional paid in capital again reverted to the former stockholders but we didn't really reduce any additional paid in capital we just transferred it. Okay so that takes care of our stock warrants here issued with bonds using this proportional method to allocate the bond and the warrant and then we also exercise some of these stock warrants here uh, by the, uh, the investors that were holding these stock warrants at the time.